Is the cheapest real estate agent the best agent for you? We'll get into it. Hey folks, Todd Tremonti here with Market Experts Realty and the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. Uh, we, we do real estate Q&A videos multiple times per week. Uh, the question this week is a little bit different and I love the question. And the question that came in really, uh, to say it as concisely as I can, is, is basically, why would I pay a real estate agent any more than I have to? And so I'll break it down a little bit more detail than that. I mean, I think buried in that question is, um, shouldn't I just pay the lowest commission I possibly can? Well, yes, I am biased, but I'm gonna do my very best right now to give you an absolutely unbiased answer. Uh, and my answer is no. No, you shouldn't seek out the absolute lowest price possible for professional advice. Now, I think saying it that way helps you understand kind of my perspective here. I don't want the absolute cheapest accountant I can find. I don't want the absolute cheapest attorney I can find. By all means, I don't want the absolute cheapest doctor I can go to. Now, I don't want to pay any more than makes sense, but I believe the wise investor, the wise homeowner, the wise steward of their financial resources, their time resources, their energy resources is looking for the most value not the cheapest price. Uh, there are people that buy BMWs, obviously not because it's the cheapest car they can get. There are people that pay highly successful attorneys a much higher rate per hour because of the results that their track record shows that they deliver to their clients. There are people that pay a specialist a higher uh, hourly rate or doctor's visit rate or insurance rate, a billable rate than they would a general practitioner or certainly a brand new inexperienced general practitioner. Um, cancer doctors tend to be paid very well compared to sort of a, a, a general practicing or maybe a nurse practitioner or something like that. There's no criticism of any one versus the other, but there's a higher value and often there's just a higher perceived value and therefore there's different compensation. And I want to encourage people to think about their real estate professional that way. If you've watched many of my videos, or if you've ever worked with us, or if you've seen any of our coaching and consulting that we do for real estate professionals, you know that my big passion is for people to understand that a real estate agent is not a commodity. Number one, no person should ever be a commodity. I believe people are created with unique God-given gifts and abilities. Therefore, we're all different, and the value that we deliver is different. Now. To go beyond that and simply to say there is no set standard that a real estate professional is going to deliver to a client. Um, some people will simply find you a house, open the door, hammer out the contract and sort of stay in the background. Others will uh, find homes that you never had access to, creatively negotiate from start to finish, walk you through the whole process, hold your hand, recommend vendors, protect you, advise for you, create multiple back doors for you to back out of if you need to, multiple leverage and negotiation points for you to benefit from and create an enjoyable experience that you would want to repeat again. And so there's a wide variety of different values that are delivered by an agent. There's a lot of technical difference from agents. There's a solo agent. Um, there's a husband wife team, there's an agent with support staff, there's a team and there's a brokerage model. So there's a lot going on there. Um, my encouragement is not to tell you which of those scenarios is necessarily best for you, but it's to remind you that because there's such a variety of business models, there's a huge variety in what value can and should be delivered. And therefore the compensation model is very different. Um, one real estate agent might charge a flat fee. I've actually had that model in the past. It might be a really low flat fee. It might be a really high flat fee relative to other fees. It might be a percentage basis. Someone might charge 1%, someone might charge 9 or 10%. Well, it's not necessarily better to have a 1% agent versus a 9 or 10% agent. If the 1% agent doesn't do much for you and the 9 or 10% agent puts a much larger check in your pocket and a much more enjoyable, safe, protected experience for a seller or as a buyer, helps you pay a lot less for a much nicer, safer, enjoyable home and enjoy the process and have a more peaceful process throughout the way. Real estate is such a multifaceted, highly complex process that it's very difficult for someone to compare apples to apples. One agent will do it for this fee, another agent charges this fee, another agent will do it for no fee at all. There's a website saying they'll buy my house without me having to deal with any of that. There's a website saying they'll help me sell my house without having to deal with any of that. 
it, it, it requires a lot more discernment than to buy a commodity, to buy a physical product that truly could be compared apples to apples. And my encouragement is when you're considering buying or selling, that you go that route, that you have a discerning approach, that you sit down and evaluate at least one, but ideally two or three people that could serve your needs. And you find the person that really can help you and deliver the most value to you. And then you consider compensation for that person based on that value. From a purely mathematical perspective, if one agent has a track record of selling homes for 10% more than the average agent in the market, they're worth a portion of that 10%. On the one hand, they would be worth 9%. You would still come out 1% ahead. Now, you probably shouldn't have to pay that much of the gain, but my point is they would be worth it, especially as most real estate professionals are, you're not even paying them until the job's already done, until they've proven that value to you. Now, there are other models where you pay uh, a retainer up front, uh, and there's some good versions of that. There's a lot of really bad versions of that. Uh, and there's a bunch of different business models, especially in the Dallas-Fort Worth market right now. They will come and go as markets shift um, that would allow you to pay a much smaller fee up front or, or a little bit larger fee at the back end or get a credit of that fee back at closing, those kind of things. Again, there's plenty of gimmicks and there's plenty of legitimate business models out there. But what I want to really encourage and train consumers, home buyers, home sellers, investors to think about is not what's the absolute lowest commission or lowest fee I can pay, but what's the maximum value I could gain from the process. And it's not just dollars and cents. Obviously, when you're selling, the amount of money that you get back is a huge driver. When you're buying, the lowest amount of money you invest in the process is a huge driver, but it's not the only factor. You might find that you saved $1,000, but it cost you 20 or 30 nights of sleep. You might find that you saved $1,000 in commissions, but it cost you eighteen dollars or $20,000 in negotiations, inspections, surveys, repairs, uh, prorated days of taxes and insurance, title fees, vendor fees, um, uh, delays, and all sorts of other ridiculous expenses. So it's not as simple as lowest commission wins. We are not going to be the lowest commission out there. There are people out there advertising that they'll do it for no commission. I think most intelligent people know you're not, no one's going to do that. There's, there's a catch somewhere. Unless that's like your mom and she's doing it because she loves you as a favor, great, use your mom. Now make sure you still get value because free can oftentimes be really, really expensive. It's kind of like advice. Most people don't use free advice. Um, you don't want to be a real estate agent's least profitable client. You're going to get their least amount of attention and energy and focus. Even if they want to do better than that, subconsciously, that's how their leanings will turn out for you. Now, my recommendation is if you're considering buying, selling, investing in real estate, that you evaluate multiple options and you really consider not necessarily who's the lowest or who's the highest, but who's the best for you, who's going to deliver the most value to you. And you want to pay that person well. You want them to have the financial resources to invest in you, in marketing, in staff, in education, in expertise, just like the best attorneys and doctors and CPAs tend to be the more educated, the most experienced, the best staff, the best tools and resources and technology. You want to look for that in a real estate professional as well. So this has nothing specifically to do with how we do business. Obviously, we do business in line with this same philosophy. We're not out there saying we're the lowest flat fee ever. I owned a flat fee brokerage for five years. We tested that methodology and we did not believe that that was the absolute best route for our clients or us. Now, I know some agents that charge way more than we charge. And in our market at this time with what we do, we don't believe that's the best route either. But it's not one size fits all. There's not one fee that's best for everybody. There's not one approach that's best for everybody. Some of those web websites are good for some people. They're not good for most people. But I want you to evaluate multiple options and really strongly consider that what's most important is your net benefit at the end. The amount of money you're st you still have in your pocket at the end and the way you feel at the end, the amount of stress you've had to experience, the amount of risk and liability that you may or may not carry forward based on the expert that you choose to work with. So I want to encourage you not just consider fee, but consider the value that comes from that expert and then compensate that person well so that they're committed to delivering value and so that you can de develop a relationship that will benefit you long after a sale is made and a commission is paid. 
So that's where the real, real value is, is the lifetime value of having an advocate and an expert in your corner. So that's what I recommend you do. Hopefully this is valuable to you. By the way, if you're a real estate professional listening to this, I strongly advise that you operate your business this way, where it's not a one price, one fee fits all for every single client, but you really think about how can you deliver the most value so that every client, when it comes to closing and funding and beyond, would look back and say, oh my gosh, that was worth every penny. I would have paid more because of the value I received. So if you think this video is valuable, please like it, click the thumbs up, let other people know this is a great video that would help them. And by all means, share this video with anyone and everyone that you believe it would be valuable for. Tag them, share it in a private message, share it on your page, share it on your group, share it on your profile. Uh, and then uh, definitely comment below. We read every single comment. We'll make videos on new ideas. We'll answer you back. We'll get connected with you offline. And uh, subscribe to our channel. We'll keep making great videos for you in the future. Take care.